And uh, when she told me that she was a rocket scientist, I didn't believe her. I was like, yeah, right. You know? Mm. Well, I didn't really believe her. All right, so she got released six weeks before I did. And when I got out, uh, we banded together and we opened a company, she and I did. And the way that came to be was is that I was on parole and she was on parole in Huntsville. And I knew that her last name started with R and mine started with P, so we report at the same time. I had talked to vocational rehabilitation services, and if you miss talking to those people, you've missed a good opportunity for a next job. Okay? And they told me that, uh, I, I believe you can run your own business. And I said, I did for 28 years in her business. And they said, uh, get us a business plan up. Let's see if we can help with something. I do not use a laptop until this day. I Facebook at the bad end. Okay? I don't use a laptop. So, me knowing that she is, was uh, a software engineer and that she has to report to the parole board too, I made a point to run into her. And I asked her, would you like to go with business with me? She said, do it one. I said, I don't know yet, but it's legal. This is what I've been offered. So we came up, she wrote a business plan and we came up and we opened up a lawn care business that became so successful in a year and a half that we were in eight states with 80 full-time employees. So we know how to run a business if we know how to do anything. Okay, and at that point in time, God laid on my heart. I, I am a firm believer in God. And God laid on my heart that I had not kept my promise that I made when I left that prison, and that was to help ex felons. And so we were coming one day from the church. I remember like it was yesterday. And I told we were driving a brand new truck, and we were going to my house that I owned that I had gotten since I went into business. Okay, and I told Melinda, she was on parole and I was on parole, so we couldn't live together. Okay, and I told Melinda, I said, I wanna ask you something. I said, God told, just told me that I've got to shut down this business. Now she's oh, part owner in this business. And I've gotta to go to Montgomery and I've gotta help these felons. She looked at me and she knows how my relationship with God. And she said, let me finish these contracts and we'll shut down. Successful business now. Successful. Successful enough that I drive a new truck and live in my own house a year and a half after prison. Okay? That's that's success. So we did. We, we bought a travel trailer. And we moved an RV and we moved to Prattville, Alabama. And we started campaigning to open up this facility. And yeah, we got plenty of doors closed in our face because after all, who believes ex felons? Right? Yeah. Who trusts us? Nobody. Okay? And that's how that was going. But we made such a strong impact statement, our passion for wanting to help ex felons, that people started believing us. And they started, we had we got a judge to come on the board. We got uh, we were endorsed by senators. Okay, we were endorsed by judges. We were endorsed by the, the mayor's office in Montgomery, the chief of police in Montgomery. These are some major people to be endorsed by two ex felons still on parole, right? So all of a sudden, one day I went to check the mail. Linda came out. She said, you got a letter from the governor's office. I said, do what? And I opened it up, and it said, by, by, by the power of the governor, I hereby appoint you to the women and girls in the criminal justice system as a reentry professional. And I was like, does, does the governor know I'm still on parole? Undoubtedly did. So I started going up and sitting on this board with senators, the representatives, with the Alabama Department of Correction, the commissioners, and I sat there with my head held high. Okay? Because I am no longer a convict. I am an individual who is out on the road at that point in time. But I was proud to be free. And proud to be able to look elbows with these people. Okay? I got a lot of media coverage from that. Subsequently, I wound up getting my pardon. Okay? Because I was doing so well. Because I was doing, we were doing, but I was doing what was unbelievable to most people after you serve 15 straight years in prison. It was unbelievable to walk out in, out of that into this. It was unbelievable to everybody. All right, and then when the program really became a success, media coverage was nothing. 
I mean, everybody was wanting to know, how did I do it? How did I do it? We did it. We're a team. And we did it together. But how did this happen? How did we get where we're at? But let me tell you, if you don't know the answer to that, I haven't told you anything. We got there by the grace of God. Do you think for one minute I received that that pardon just because I wanted to say, can I please have a pardon? You better believe I was sitting next to the major parole people. They they interacted with me. They knew me. They they met me. They knew. So that therefore I received my pardon. Okay. Today, eight years ago, I sit on the bunk inside the Department of Corrections as an inmate. Today, I sit on their advisory board and stakeholder board down in Montgomery. So I am advisor to Alabama Department of Corrections. Think about that. Okay. I know what it takes to be successful when we get out. I know what it takes. You have to let us out. You cannot let us do our time and then set us outside and still socially incarcerate us. Today, I'm a free person. I'm no longer incarcerated, and so are you. You may be on papers. So what? That's, that too shall pass. That too shall pass. Okay? So what if your ex, that's the reason it says ex, ex that out, ex that ex felon part out. So what? Don't let your past hinder your future. I'm here to be complete, visible evidence that the past does not affect, affect the future unless you let it affect the future. It does not affect it. You understand that? Now, I have been asked next month to go and speak before the, uh, the uh, what is that? The Country Club in Montgomery. Contractors all across the state. I'm going to talk to contractors from all across the state about my program and about helping my people and about getting my people back to work. You know, four years ago, it was real hard for the contractors yeah. to understand it. Yeah. They need know. workers. I need jobs. Let's work together. Don't worry about if that man broke the law. He did burglary. He's now served the time. He's no longer guilty of that. He wants to walk out and be normal. And I had to tell them that. Now look, you can keep overlooking my people if you want to because of their past. But it's affecting you because Alabama is some 30,000 workers short in the construction industry alone. And you've got a pool of people here that are good, reliable workers that are ready. He passed them by. Well, now it's come to be that they're not passing us by anymore. Okay, I have a lot of construction companies that want to hire my people because my people are dependable. And because my people need to build their self and their reputation back up. Okay, it didn't take them but a split second to tear it down, did it? Prove. But it's a proven fact that every step you take forward should be a step in the right direction. And I don't want y'all to turn around looking back. You can't do anything about yesterday. But you can do everything about today and tomorrow. You have a new opportunity, a new chance to be a bigger, better you. But you have to believe in you. Because if you don't believe in you, no one else will. Do you think Miss Fitz believed in herself? Trust me, I'll tell you right now, I believe in myself. Because I learned a long time ago. I'm my best friend. You understand? I'm my best friend. God made me unique. He made every one of us unique. He made us what he wanted us to be. All these things that happened in the past, they were just lessons to train us to be stronger warriors, stronger people. Okay? Stronger people. So what you got, you know what? So what kind of boots wear is best? A brand new pair or a pair that's more slap out? Well, it's got all them scars and bumps and scratches and dirt. I'm not it hurt. So we are all the way that the left toe is the one that does the uh, yeah that's the hard toe that's the hard toe but we we are worn out boots so what do you think works best <laughs> okay that's us we are the best of the best you hear me we're not the worst 
We are the best of the best because we chose to become a different individual by getting this.